take the pins out of my pattern. When I take the pins out of my pattern, I'm going to lay it down on the table. Okay, so then the first thing I'm going to do is open this up and then curve this and, oh yeah, finalize this little adjustment right here. Okay, so that's okay. what I'm going to do. So, I needed to take out a wedge at the upper back. And this is Vogue uh, 9025. I cut a size 14 upper. And then I'm doing a the back. I am taking out a wedge minus a 3 8 inch wedge. And that's the upper back and arm, arm hole. And then for the back, I haven't made any changes there. So I concentrate only on the top first, but I know that for the pattern, I cut on the bottom, I cut a size. Okay, this here is 14 or 16. 16 is 44 inches. That means there's no zip. That's zero ease. Now, the, the back, I discovered that my break point is right here. So, I will go in a little here, which would be, I think I'll do 3 eighths of an inch there and 3 eighths of an inch on that side. And then I'll end up coming... I'll end up finishing up. It'll be like a dart. This seam will essentially be shaped like a dart. So it'll be shaped on the curve. Sort of, sort of, so to speak. Okay. And I cut a size 16 back here. So I'll take this apart from the top. Alrighty. Take that apart. I am taking the skirt apart from the base, from the bodice. Now, the skirt is here, the bodice is here. And as I move forward to re removing all of the seam allowances, I want to make sure that I do the same thing I did here so that these are matched when I'm done. So I match that seam allowance up. And I go up to the waistline and I curve the waistline out to match. And I turn it over, matching the seam line, and then draw the match to that. And just make it into a small dot. Y'all see that? I can take the, the pins out and that's going to make my back a lot more curvy and I take the pins out of the back all the way up until I get to any other point where I made some changes now this right here I'm going to take all that out I'm not changing this one because that wasn't the problem so that one goes and this one stays So right there, this first one needs to be taken care of, right here. So I draw a line right there. Take that out. Draw a line here and here. That way I see the line right there. Actually, it turned out to be three-fourths of an inch. But I'm not going to do it a whole three-fourths of an inch. Turn it over. Use a dry iron. Make sure it doesn't have any steam in. And this is where I want to do it, but I'm not going to do it the whole, I'm just going to do it over here. So all I do is cut that open. And I noticed that this has a pretty pronounced curve in it right here. Now normally, I don't need that much curve in my back. So I'll probably be trimming that down by one-fourth of an inch because I know me. That curve is too pronounced. 
I need to curve down here, which is what I was doing. I need that curve down there. So let me cut this open. To there and just overlap it. And that's it. And my notches have not been moved. And now all I do is tape that down. I'm using pins to hold it in place for now. And all I do is tape it down. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, so this here is the center back. And I just did this center back. This is the side back. I made that curve, the side back, but I need to think about this right here. So I'll remember that. That's a center seam, so I can worry about that later. This is a side seam. So I'm going, well, actually it's not a side seam. It's like the princess, uh, side princess seam on the back. And so basically what that's doing is that's making that more of a curve right here. All right, so that's what that is doing. Sometimes when you're doing tissue fitting, you're making adjustments and you're actually making observations that you have to help yourself to remember as you're working through it. So it's a good idea to have the pattern pieces laid out on the table in front of you in an orderly way as you review and take a look at them. See, because this one here is where the curve was too high, which means the bust was too high. That's going to get moved down when I open this up. Okay, when I open this bust up, it's going to move it around. So now that I've taken the pins out, I'm going to turn it over and press it, then turn it back over and do the manipulations. So right now I'm just pressing to make it flat because we're using it as a fitting shell. So, and sometimes these little things get all squiggly, scraggly. Just put some tape on it. Don't feel like it was a waste. Okay? It's okay. When you're done with this, you can lay this whole thing on some more paper and have a pattern. This is the full bust adjustment for a princess seam. I see these points. Y'all remember me marking these points? These are my points to help me to know where the bust opens up at. So I'm going to tape all of this down because now I'm about to change and open this up. I'm going to use those little areas. I'm just securing it and making it better. I'm doing a princess seam adjustment utilizing the seam method. You see this curve right here? That's what was too much, too pronounced for me. It was too high. So I usually just shave this off right here. That's essentially what you're doing when you're pinching out a wedge. If you notice, when you pinch out a wedge, it goes in some right here. When it goes in like that, that means that it's taking the curve away. So you end up just closing it off. So if you were to draw that, redraw that curve, look what happens. It's straight. So the curve is down here now. Y'all see that? You don't have to cut around it and shift it down. That makes more sense, doesn't it? So that's all I do. Okay. Now I'm going to widen. Now I'm going to widen this. This is the same as, this is the same as if you were to use your sewing machine and just deepen that little area above your bust. That's the same difference. Okay, so now I got my new seams. These are my seams. Right there. I need to make this bigger. Oh, I lost my little green notch. 
my little green. Let me put my green back there. I need to make sure I have my, my break points. These break points are extremely important. Very, very, very important. Because those are going to be your match points. Okay, those are my break points. All right, now I'm going to cut these open and swing these out. This is going to open here, and this is going to lengthen across here. All right. Pin. Pin. Well, I don't want to pin right there. I'm going to pin to the side because I'm about to cut through here. All right, I pin, pin in a lot of different places. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut up to this point here, which is the uppermost point of the princess line into the armhole. Okay, now when you do that, you're going to open it, open it from here to be able to make that cut. And that's what I'm going to do first. And then I'll just cut on the seam line. That's why I draw my seam lines. Y'all see that? Now I can swing that out. Okay, I need a hinge up there. I'm not going to cut this off. I'm just going to make a hinge so that it'll swing. Okay, there we go. There's my swinging. Right there. You see how I can open that up? Hearts, yeses, something. I want to know if y'all got it. Okay, so I'm not going to do any changes right now. I'm not going to decide how much yet. Then I'm going to cut it down toward this much, down towards here. And then I'm going to make a hinge because I'm going to swing it out like that. Y'all see that? See how that curved? And this here doesn't move. So now I can put these pins here on this side because that's not going to move. Now, to make it easier, always line up your hinge marks, your break points across from the other ones to make sure that you're in the right place. So I just take it like that and then I know that that's my break point right there. See, this one is too low. I changed it. That was that you want to make sure they match. And I did that. So that's not the right one. This is the one. So I moved that up. Once I matched up that seam, I see that's in the correct place. And then this one here. And then I curved around, walk, walk the seam, walking the seam back around here. But if you notice, this here now is it's open. There's too much space between these two. This one doesn't match anything. It matches in the middle. That's how I know to lengthen this one to make it go over my bust. Okay, so checking that again, walking it, walking my seam allowance, walking that seam allowance, and coming on around, and it should match this one. But I need one and a half inch. And I'm going to share another thing with you. Since I already took this curve out, I don't want more curve added. So I like to jar it a little bit, keep it straight, because it's automatically going to try to curve right there. So I try to keep it straight and let the curve happen down here. You see, so that, that actually causes that seam to be swooping in slightly. So that when you sew it, it's going to curve. If you get the point... It's going to curve in and then go like that. That's what you want. Because you got this deep, this deep part right here. You start making that curve in that seam on the pa pattern itself. Then it'll curve around better and go to your break point here. Out another break point, then down. That's why I call them break points. Okay. So I'm going to leave this pinned for now. Because I don't want it to until I'm done with all of my adjustments, 
this is going to remain pinned. This here is a total of that is five eighths of an inch. So five eighths of an inch times two is one and one fourth inch. So if that's one and one fourth inch, I need one and a half. That means I need to add another three fourths over here or one fourth, three eighths over here or one fourth. So when you lengthen this, that's essentially making this bigger. But I want to do better than that. I want this to open up as well. Just a little bit, because that's just me. Because this is like cooking, and I'm I'm the cook, and I can change the recipe just slightly my own self. So, we're going to cut right across here to lengthen the front. by whatever the difference is here. So I'm going to draw my line using my ruler and my pen. And that looks like that's about a half an inch. I'm just going to lengthen it by a tad bit. Not a lot. I'm going to lengthen it more like, and y'all know I said I like three-eighths of an inch. So that's what I'm going to do. Three-eighths of an inch. this I need to swing this to give myself some space I'm still using my grid grid board to help me keep everything straight so that's a good thing about the grid board all right cuz that way you know you got everything straight cuz I'm about to make some changes that could essentially interfere with the grain line okay so I'm just going to put this up there. So I just gave myself 5 eighths of an inch right here. So this is 5 eighths of an inch right there. So now I'm going to just open this up a little bit. And I like 3 eighths of an inch. I just like 3 eighths of an inch. 5 eighths plus, five eighths plus 3 eighths is 1 eighth. That's 1 inch. Oh, well, I need to have more. I need 5 eighths of an inch anyway because that's total of one and one fourth I need three inches total you see how easy it is to make that mistake you see how easy it is to make a mistake and not include all of your measurement changes in there I mean even though I'm not distracted today I still there's still a chance of that happening that's why it's always good to just use pins first safety pin not safety pins but yeah Pins are good to position it, check it, then tape. Because if you start taping and, and making your adjustments final straight off the bat, then you don't catch yourself. You don't, you don't give yourself a, a opening to be able to make adjustments or to actually check your work. So you always want to check your work. So in this particular case, pins are like working with a pencil. You check your work first. We're going to keep on going on making the adjustment to the front panel. I've already done the adjustment to the side panel, so now I'm going to make the adjustment to the front panel. And I'll do the same amount, 5 eighths of an inch. So we have this one here is 5 eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to open this one up 5 eighths of an inch. And all I do is cut on the seam line again. And the break point is where you start to make the major change. And this is my break point. And it matches the break point on the side panel. So I could just start right there and start swinging it open. Got a little tape somewhere. Okay, just start swinging it open just like that. Pin it down. You see how I cut a little hinge so that when I make that curve, you're noticing how this is starting to curve? It's curving to my body for me. It's all mine. 
and I want it at the main part of the bust, which is right here. You notice it's not high anymore. It's not too high. It's down where it needs to be now. Okay? And that's a 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, there we go. And then this one here. And this is the lower part. So I'm going to cut there. And on the seam line up to the break point. Up to the break point. And then swing it out. So y'all notice how this is curving. It's curving a little too much on this one. I might have to just open this one some more. I don't want it to be so pronounced because this is supposed to be kind of straight. So when you're looking at it and you think, oh, that just doesn't look right. Let me just adjust it accordingly. You know, sometimes it's not going to look right. It really isn't. It's going to be a rounded part on you, on your body. That's okay. But just make sure it's not so... Just make sure it's not so pronounced that it becomes a curve in itself. This is the one that's supposed to be doing most of the curving over here. This one here usually is straight. You straighten it out and it becomes... It, it, it actually lays as a panel and all of the curving is done around the side seam. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one up a little bit more. Maybe more like an inch. And that way I can make this one lower. So you kind of make the adjustment where you feel it's fit. And don't forget that lengthening this here also adds some to make it around this curve. Why is it that some people actually add the same amount instead of... Why is it? Why is it that some people add the same amount? I misunderstood the question. Because I was reading it and I was trying to calculate it in my brain. Didn't I didn't get it. Do they add it to both sides? Okay, let's talk about, I think I understand what you're asking. Let's talk about balance. Balance makes the difference. If I had a woman that's broader, she's broader than me. Say for instance, she weighs maybe, I don't like talking about weight. So let's talk about bra cup. Let's say that she wears the same size as me up here, but she's a G cup and I'm only a D cup. She needs three, four, she needs two inches or two and a half inch full bust adjustment. Okay. So she needs a two and a half inch full bust adjustment. I only need a one and a half inch bust adjustment. Essentially, we could do the same exact adjustment, but what is happening is that she's broader across the chest, not just on the sides. She's broader across the chest in here as well. So she needs that change in here and over here. Y'all get it? She needs to change here and here. So we need to open it up evenly across. A little here and a little there. That's going to balance the pattern and the silhouette a lot better. Okay? All right. Now let me check my... Let me turn that on again so I can see the question. Okay. So, as far as balancing the pattern, it's a matter of aesthetics so that it'll look more balanced on the body. That is our objective is to not follow an arbitrary rule, but to consider the statue of the person we're making the garment for. Okay? I'm going to continue evaluating 
our changes here. We got this lengthened. That, that takes up some of the extra length that happened over here. I used maybe half an inch there. This ended up being like three-eighths of an inch there. Now, if I check the length of all of this, so I'm going to check the measurements now. At this point, before I do anything, <laughs> I'm going to check my seam allowances to see if they're going to be right. Now, this seam allowance here is no longer this one. This is the seam allowance right here, not this one. So when I measure the seam allowance to check, I'm measuring this one that I moved out, not this old one. So we're going to check our seam lines. So I'm going to measure my seam line on the new seam. This is the new seam. Okay, one. That's it right there. Right there. Right there. Okay, that's 14 and I'd say 3 eighths. Then I'm going to measure this one. And if you need to, write it down, man. Always write your numbers down. Okay, write them down and then check the next one. To make sure these seam lines match up. If they don't, then I know what to do. See, that one is longer. It's 15. Because you remember, some of the pattern is going to be eased in. So you don't want them to be exactly the same. If you if they exactly the same, it's not gonna it's not gonna work because you need to make sure that this straight can go around this curve. Okay, that's why you double check and double check. I have checked all of these measurements. This is good. I'm not changing that. All of this is good. So now I'll start taping. And this here has to stay there because I need to put some paper between there. So I'm just taping these areas first. And then I'm going to put tape across there. Across that, that section. Now this here is only like one fourth of an inch up in here that I have that little opening. It's very small. And that's okay. Okay. Now this one here is really large. That one there is three fourths. Three fourths and three fourths. I'm going to open up one more bit to make it a full inch. But I don't like it like super like that. So sometimes I cut it right here. Y'all see how that curved open? Oops. What term? Y'all see how that curved more? When I give it a little bit of push like that? That's a true S curve. That is definitely going to fit nice that's going to fit really nice but if that is so pronounced it might be good for this to have a little bit of a curve which is why i did it the last time so i'm gonna put that curve back in there because i just want to i'm gonna put that curve back in there because that way i have two curves going to two curves this is when you have a really large bust you see this is for the really large bust. This is okay. See that? Now I'm going to go ahead and put this curve back in here because I'm I don't want to cheat myself. It's a princess seam. If it's too much, sew it out. If you don't have it, you can't add it in. So at least now I'll have it there. And if I don't need it, get rid of it. That's how I think. Yeah, I feel better now. I was trying to be, I was trying to be uh, conservative, but I don't like being conservative. But it's not going to be too big, I can tell you that much. It's going to be perfect. See? 
There we go. Oh, this one here doesn't look that good. Okay, there we go. Now, that curve is going to go good. It might be a little bit too much, but that's okay. I have all these seam lines I can work with. All right, that's it right there. So now since I do have paper underneath, I can just go ahead. Oh, I knew I would run out of tape. Since I have paper underneath, I can go ahead and just tape it all up. Remove my pins. Remove the pins and tape it up. Seam. Close it up right there. And this one here. draw this in so you can see it visually what what went on these are not moving because they're taped down to the under paper but y'all see this right here this is my new seam line see that Yeah, that's my new seam line. And this one here is longer than this one. That's the nature of a princess seam. So this one here being longer is fine. It is fine. When I measured it and it was like three-eighths of an inch longer, that's okay. That's because it's supposed to be like that. So I measured it one more time. And it turned out to be 14 and three-fourths. This one over here. is 14 and a half so I might take some of this off because I want it to be yeah there we go y'all see how that wasn't that was kind of ugly looking you see that that was kind of ugly so I want to smooth that out a little bit better okay so now I cut this out and that is all I do to this pattern pin this together real quick and this is always good to do one last check oh y'all can't see there you go and do one last check
and we open it up. You see what happens? I just like to lay it like this to get it flat because now that it has so much tape, it's going to be hard to manipulate too much. So I usually use my fingers to open it up, to open the seam line up. To make it easier to, to check on my body. And now, I already did the back. I made the change on the back. So I put the pins back in this one. Make sure I match up the seam line. Oh, there we go. Match up the side seam on the back to do a quick tissue fit. Everywhere, not too much. I'm not worried about putting 100 pins in it because my main objective right now, and don't forget, I made a new seam line down here on the base of the skirt to match the new bottom of the skirt. I mean, on the base of the bodice to match the new base on the other part. So that is a new seam line there and it feeds right back into the original seam line. And that's how that works. Right there. So this is the adjustments for that pattern. Okay, now the side seam. And it's kind of getting a little bit worn. So if your pattern starts to feel like it's, start, it's beginning to get a little bit worn, the good thing you can do is just take strips of one inch, uh, one inch wide. Uh, when you want to secure the seam allowances and you don't want to use interfacing for the entire pattern, just use one inch strip interfacing and the one inch strip interfacing will actually help you to uh, secure your patterns, especially at the seam lines. You don't have to worry about putting interfacing over the entire piece. But if you notice, the uh, front pattern piece, front panel, fit perfectly to the panel. The pattern like this, I think I answered that same question to you about a month ago, about an hour. I would be finished. I've already done all the fitting. And now I'm finished with that. And now I'm getting ready to uh, do the bottom. So that didn't take long. It probably, if I wasn't talking, I'd probably be finished. I would be finished. I'd be finished and I already cut the pattern, cut the fabric. Uh, okay, here we go. Let me get my mirror. Notice I'm making sure it's under my arm first, and then I put my put my arm down, and then I make sure that the front is done. Do y'all see that? Isn't that beautiful? Y'all see that? Yep. So. Now, this here, changing the neckline, is a design change. And this is giving me plenty room, okay? And this is on top of a shirt. So, imagine how well it's going to fit with a ponty knit. And that is where it, the center is. And this is paper, and it's not really flat. So, that is, that is a very good fit. Now, this back here, I'm still a little bit concerned about that being a little tight. And I'm wondering if I need to give myself... Let me see. This is the, I'm, I'm folding this back because I want to see where the seam line is going to be. I don't want to have gaposis right up in here. I mean, I don't want, I don't want like any fat coming out of there. You know what I'm saying? So if you have a little bit of pudge coming out, some people have pudge only on one side. I have a little pudge only on one side. 
This side doesn't have pudge. No, this is my pudgy side. This is my non-pudgy side. You know the little part that comes right over your bra right here? Yeah. Okay, so this is I'm happy with. This here, I'm not sure. Right there. I'm not real sure. I might open that up a little bit. Just swing that, that seam allowance out just a tad. You know how I showed you about swinging the seam line? See this part right here? This part right here, I want to give myself a little bit more space right there over that little bra fat area. That's the bra fat area. And give myself a little bit more space. So. Thanks for watching this first part of making the adjustments to your sheath dress. Please click through to the next in this multi-part, very detailed series on making your sheath dress fit your body, your taste, your style. Please subscribe below and check my blog out at www.sewtofit.com.